Did I ever mention how much I love these saw horses? Too bad you have to purchase a tractor to get them. So with that said, yes, these tractor forks, I can't believe how useful they are. Y'all see me use them in these videos all the time at saw horses. I love them for that and for helping me get stuff out of the back of the truck like that. So today what we're gonna do is we're finally gonna build that storm shelter door. I've been kind of looking forward to this video because uh, this is gonna be a pretty neat build in my mind. We'll do some metal work, some plate metal, some angle iron, um, sandwiching a bunch of plywood together. So it's gonna be kind of interesting. And I've still gotta figure out how I'm gonna hinge and hang this. We may get into that this episode, we may not. Just kind of seems, uh, you know, got to see how long this build takes. So thank you all so much for watching. There's been a lot of interest in the uh, Storm Shelter build. It's kind of picking up more and more viewers. So hopefully y'all are enjoying it. Some of y'all have said that you have. Let's get to work.
All right, did that last little bit of welding sound so much better than the other video and the welding I was doing earlier? Yeah, there's a reason why. And I just love admitting when I'm wrong. Yeah, but I know a lot of y'all are watching this, taking some advice about welders and welding, uh, although I'm still learning MIG myself. But let me show you where I screwed up on something. Now, this welder is beautiful and the factory settings are spot on. And I'll show you why in the last video and earlier in this one when I was welding, the factory settings didn't sound good. Well, I couldn't get that frying bacon sound. You know, good wire speed and voltage and amperage. Uh, I made a mistake. All right, so if y'all know anything about welders or if you don't, I'll explain real quick. And I knew this. Here's the bad part. I knew this and I checked this when I first got the welder. I just was not paying attention. Um, had gum it. So these MIG welders can do what's called flux cord wire which is a, uh, a wire that's got a you know, flux core. It does not require gas, but it kind of leaves spatter everywhere. And I don't really like the way it welds. I've owned a flux core welder before. And I mean, it's good for sticking metal together, but the welds don't look good. So if you look on this little chart right here, you have to set up polarity different on your gun and your ground clamp. If you're gonna use flux cord wire, the gun is going to have a negative polarity positive polarity to your ground clamp. If you're going to use solid wire, which is what I'm using, you have to do exact opposite. Positive to the gun, negative to the ground clamp, which is, you know, what you would think it would always be, but no, that's not the case. So, so that is up in here where you flip these back and forth. And I knew that when I bought this welder, and I checked that, and I just did not pay attention. These were exact opposite. This, this come from the factory set up for flux cord wire, not for solid. So that's why I was getting all that clicking, popping, and could not get my wire feed speed and voltage, uh, you know, dialed in. Let me show you all right here. Now, now that it's dialed in, it sounds like I'm frying bacon. And look at those welds. I mean, it looks beautiful. So, got it figured out now. Ouch, I hate admitting when I'm wrong, but I always told y'all to be honest on the channel. And like I said, I don't want to persuade y'all, uh, you know, one way or another, you're looking at getting a welder like this. The thing is beautiful now. Now I'm curious to try it on some of that thicker 3 16ths and see if the factory settings are spot on like I've always heard that they are. I played with it forever yesterday, day before, when I was welding that door frame. And I eventually got it dialed in, the, boat, the polarity was all wrong and it took me forever and I was fighting it. I'm just like, what's going on here? I mean, it should be easier than this. Finally today, it was kind of fighting me again. I said, let me check that polarity one more time, even though I know I've already checked it. Oh, exact opposite. So I thought I'd share that with you. Check that if you wind up getting a MIG welder. All right, now y'all can see what I've got going on here. Obviously, 
Yet again, I went well above and beyond plan, but this makes me feel a whole lot better. So I got some two inch angle iron. I wanted to get two and a half so I could go all the way down and cover most of this last sheet of wood, but uh, two and a half is kind of an odd size. I'd had to order it, it took a while. So two inches common, it was in stock. So I got two, because I wanted to wrap the majority of this in. And what I'll do is come back and caulk this whole uh, seam right here to kind of make this weatherproof for outside. And you can look underneath here is my second sheet of 14 gauge steel, which again is way thicker than what plan calls for. I got 14 gauge steel here and here. Um, so this will be the back side of the door and what actually seals to the frame. Like I said, I'll caulk all this to weatherproof it. I like that I got a nice thick lip here now. I welded it out real good on the inside. I thought about welding the outside, but I think I'll just come back with some uh, exterior caulk right here and make sure water doesn't get in there and kind of seep up into my plywood. But uh, I really like wrapping it in this angle iron frame. I think it's going to make it really strong. It looks good. However, I'm about to put a bunch of bolts to it, which is not going to look good, but it's what this plan calls for. So it's three sheets of three quarter inch ply. I've then glued and screwed them together. Two sheets of 14 gauge steel front and back. Wrapped it in the angle iron. And now what you're about to see me do is go along. I gotta look at the plan again, figure out the bolt spacing. And I'm about to start drilling all the way through and bolting this together. And then uh, we'll uh, figure out how to get it hung and then ultimately paint the thing. So the plans only call for 15 screws. It doesn't really seem like a whole lot. I've got it set up for 25. I think I'm gonna start out with the 15 screws per plan. They got several along the very edge, one in the middle, and other on the other edge. So I guess I'll start out with that, take a look at it. And I decided to go with carriage bolts because it's got a nice rounded overhead. A big old stinking, uh, you know, normal size bolt head sticking out here. I just don't think it's gonna look very good in the door. This already isn't gonna look like a normal door, so I figured carriage bolts would look a little better. So let me start drilling some holes and see how this looks. I almost completely forgot about the hinges and the holes I need to drill there. Luckily, the holes that I drilled all along the edge match up perfectly with these gate hinges. I just went and adjusted and measured everything, so couldn't have did that any better, and that was by accident, so thank goodness. So I have to drill two more holes throughout here. I'm not going to uh, you know, try to divide the hinges up in three, kind of like they show in the plans, and drill even more holes when I've already got holes that I can use, so why not? <sighs> I played around in my head a lot. There's so many different ways I could have mounted this. I decided to go with what they're calling for, these big gate latch uh, bolt hinges. If I had to do this all over again, I probably would have ordered really thick angle iron that was the correct size to wrap the entire door and got like quarter inch. And I probably did weld on hinges to the door and weld on hinges to the door frame for a nice clean look. But I wound up going with what they called for almost and uh you know i think it's gonna look kind of cool i'm not gonna paint these i'm gonna paint the bolts everything else but uh, i'm gonna leave these kind of that metal look it should look kind of neat and i think i've got a way to trim it out now how i differed from the plans yet again was i went to the hardware store and the plans call for five eighths uh gate hanging bolts and i'm like yeah that sounds pretty beefy went to the store and looked at them 
No, I don't, I don't like the look of that. This is actually three quarter. Now you're probably thinking five eighths, three quarter, not a big difference. If you hold three quarter inch bolts in your hand versus the five eighths at the store, considerable difference. And the hanging point is a whole lot beefier, uh, beefier on these three quarter inch uh, hanging bolts. So I got the biggest straps that I could find, 16 inches to kind of uh, spread the weight across the door because this is such a heavy door. And we're gonna hang it to see. And if I have to, I'll come back and put two more hinges in the middle if I really feel like this thing is sagging, but I don't know, that's, that's pretty beefy. In between three of these, it should hold the door up good, but we'll find out as we go. So here is our pretty much finished door. Got my hinges all bolted in, everything caulked in. Once I get this hung, I like to run another bead of caulk all the way around the edge of the door where there's some gaps and on the top side of these hinges so water can't work its way underneath. But pretty much out of time today, I gotta go get ready for going out to dinner tonight. So I just wanna kinda show you all the finished project. This thing is heavy. Heavy, heavy, heavy. So it's gonna be interesting trying to get this propped up with the tractor. So I've still got to caulk this wood edge right here once I get it up and bolt it on. So we still got a little more work to do too. And I gotta to figure out where I wanna do my handle, but I don't wanna you know, figure out uh, the handle until I get it actually up and mounted. But the door itself is technically complete. Now it's time to hang it. All right, yet another video that's probably rocking on a bit long. So we'll save the hanging and finishing up the door frame for the uh, next episode. So we'll have to paint that. We'll have to uh, weld that tie strap in together to really tie the frame together. Uh, we'll still need to caulk that. We'll have to drill and mount our big heavy duty hanging bolts and go through the wall. And uh, like I said, it's gonna be a chore doing this by myself. A door this size, you could really use three people, easy. But I think with these tractor forks, I'll be able to take care of it. So uh, time will tell. So hopefully y'all enjoyed this episode and the little series on building this. We're starting to get there. As soon as I can get this door hung and uh, kind of get everything sealed up, we're moving on to putting siding on it and it'll really start looking like something. Then we'll jump back into the interior to finish that. It's got one more rainstorm to go through, sadly. That's why I want to hurry up and get the door on it. Um, but I hope this is the last rainstorm coming up this weekend that the siding is going to go through or the plywood before I get the siding on. I'm really ready to go ahead and make this thing weather tight. So thank y'all so much for watching. Truly appreciate it. We just hit 4,000 subscribers, so thank you. The last week or so, we've kind of really started picking up steam. Appreciate y'all liking, sharing, and subscribing. That really helps the channel to get noticed. And uh, don't forget, we're attempting to do some live streams. So next one's coming up uh, Sunday at 5 p.m., December 13th. Hopefully we'll see you on there. Thanks for watching.